Hello cuties! Welcome back to Fumbi's Daily Dueling Tutorial. I'll be alternating between solo and partner duels to ensure equal focus on both modes. In today's matchup, it's Harry, that's me, and the Weasley Twins, my teammate, facing off against Professor Snape and the Weasley Twins. My Harry deck includes the four main cards, a Pugno, Broomstick, Exposal, and Stupefy, along with Prior, Phoenix, Snitch, and Puppy. The twins carry Peer Totem, while Snape brought the Whomping Willow. It's worth noting that I've only mentioned one card from each player. Our primary goal as duelists is to identify the most troublesome card in our opponent's deck, which is either the summon card with the most health or the spell card with the most damage. Once we pinpoint it, we can predict its usage by counting their card plays. The troublesome card can be accessed, which is in their hand, every 4 cards, or 3 if they deployed Phoenix, which reduces their deck to 7 cards for approximately 2 minutes. Now, let's dive into our case analysis. In my starting deck, I have Snitch, Phoenix, Broomstick, and Stupefy. It's important to know that casting the Broomstick alone isn't advisable, and Stupefy is best reserved for clearing the field. Therefore, summoning either the Snitch or Phoenix proves to be a wiser decision. In this instance, I opted for the Snitch. Remember, it's crucial to keep your distance from the snitch once it's summoned, especially when anticipating your opponent's AoE spells. As an example, I managed to successfully evade Sectum Sempra, a card that bounces between enemy targets within a specific range. Positioning yourself in the center of the field facilitates hairy players in finding the right angle to cast Stupefy. An effective tip to counter Harry is to anticipate their spell casting as soon as they begin to move. Conversely, if they remain still, it's a sign that something is brewing, so it's wise to prepare for their spell casting tip. At this point, 30 seconds have gone by in the match, making an ideal time to deploy Phoenix. Its resurrection ability will trigger 3 times and reduce your deck to 7 cards for approximately 2 minutes. McGonagall is a companion known for her ability to transfigure all enemy summons upon entry, which lasts for 10 seconds. Additionally, she casts Transfiguration on a random enemy target for 5 seconds each time you cast a card. Given this, it's most effective to employ a strategy of quickly casting low cost cards after deploying McGonagall. Now that my McGonagall cooldown has reset, I've saved up enough MP for a combination attack that involves spamming spells. My preferred combination consists of using a Pugno and Prior on a Pugno simultaneously, along with the Broomstick. The Broomstick plays a crucial role in distributing a Pugno to multiple enemy targets, while also inflicting significant damage thanks to McGonagall's transfiguration ability upon her entry. It's essential to prevent Ron from clearing your field whenever possible. For Harry players, utilizing Stupefy is the optimal choice. Just as demonstrated here, I strategically positioned myself to cast Stupefy and take out Ron. Now, our opponent has cast the Obscurus, a card with a distinctive set of abilities. Obscurus launches 6 rapid basic attacks at random enemy units within the target area while briefly slowing them down. Following these attacks, the target zone explodes, causing substantial damage to all enemy units caught inside. If there are no opponent units within the target area, the area will detonate, concluding the attack. Furthermore, Obscurus weakens the user for 5 seconds, increasing the damage they take by 40%. Consequently, maneuvering out of the target area will compel them to retreat to their side of the field. When the opponent deploys Obscurus, it serves as a signal for us to prepare for a counterattack. We should patiently await their final attack, which is the potion, and then spam spells upon them. In partner duels, our primary objective should be getting double kills. This approach is strategically sound since players receive 5 MP upon revival. 
Hence, we should refrain from eliminating them one by one and instead focus on eliminating both simultaneously. In this scenario, I'm strategically alternating damage between them to gradually lower both their health bars. As you can observe, this tactic proves successful, leading to us to victory in the game. That concludes today's tutorial. See you tomorrow!